Good morning, everybody. Um, I have to do this in English. I normally talk uh, French, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you understand that better. But uh, than my English. Um, let's start with this. Um, as I said, my name is Robin, and I suffer diabetes since uh, 1994, so about 20 years. And um, I like, first like to tell something what an impact diabetes can have on, on, on one's life. I still can remember the day uh, the doctor told me, go to the hospital for four days and try to um, get your life uh, on the line again. And um, well, I still, if I, if I remember that moment, I still get emotional a, bit, a little bit, but um, uh, because your life changes and, and you don't realize at that point. And uh, it means you have to, uh, you have to learn to inject yourself. Try to stick something in your own body, and you know how difficult that is, at least the first days. Uh, then you have to do some finger stick uh, tests, um, all kinds of things. You have to calculate carbohydrates. You have to think about how much insulin you have to inject yourself. And if the, the best you're doing, you're still not doing good, because you get hippos, you get hypers, low sugars, high sugars. And uh, that means if you get a hypo, you can't function anymore. So um, you, you'll be at least for half an hour, three quarters of an hour, you, you, you can't work anymore. So you have to sit down and, and do other things, um, eat sugar, etc. cetera. So um, then, and then again, you have to do things on the, on the long term. Uh, as, a, as a reward on, on, on your disease, you, get, you can get blind, you can have your feet am amputated, you can uh, uh, get Alzheimer, all those kinds of things. And um, well, that, that doesn't make you quite, uh, quite happy. So, um, and, and, and at that point I thought, okay, um, well, uh, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm not the only one too. Uh, as you can see here, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of million people in, 45 million people in the world have, t have type 1 diabetes. And, um, and it costs also uh, a lot of money to, to, to treat them and, uh, and, and, and have all the things paid for. So um, at that point, I thought, okay, uh, I had 10 years diabetes in 2004, and I was not quite happy with, with the treatments I'm, I'm getting from the hospital. And I thought, well, is, is it perhaps possible to, to make something? As a technician, I thought, well, I, I know they had um, CGMs in, in, uh, in the hospitals, uh, cont continuous glucose monitors, and I know they had insulin pumps. I thought, well, if we connect, connect something, uh, is, is it possible to arrange it automatically so you don't have to think anymore and you can at least uh, live like a normal person? And um, well, and that's that's what we what we did. And I thought, well, how can I realize this? And um, here you can see in 2004 uh, we built our we built our device. It's here, and uh, it's working on. It worked at that time on two laptops. It had a PLC inside, and a friend of mine who was a software engineer and uh, electrotechnicus. Um, he uh, he helped building it, and another friend of mine was a diabetes nurse in the hospital, and he arranged the insulin pumps. They still don't have it back, so uh, <laughs> they are in my barn. Uh, and uh, well, we started testing. Here you can see um, a, a CGM at that time was quite big, and here you can see an insulin pump, and I also had a glucagon pump because I thought, as a technician, if you want to try to try to drive straight in a car without the possibility to steer to the left. It's not possible. You, you, end, up, you end up to the right of the road. So it's, 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 it's important to go both ways. So I thought, how, how can I do that? To, go, to, to lower my sugars, I can, I can do that with insulin. That's not a problem. But um, how can I get them up again? Um, and at that point, I thought, OK, uh, there is glucagon. I had glucagon in, in, my, in my fridge. I thought, well not knowing of, of how the body really worked at that time, I, I thought, well, at least they inject it in me and I, and I wake up again. So it could be a possibility to, to use that in a, in a closed loop system. And, um, and we tried it. And uh, we tried it for two years, uh, mainly on myself. And, um, uh, and with these, those results, we went to the, uh, to the AMC, the Academic Hospital in Amsterdam. And um, well, they were actually quite impressed on, on what we achieved. And um, we, at, at that time, we also tested four or five uh, other volunteers um, in, in the hospital here in, uh, in Almelo. And, um, uh, and, and those, those results altogether um, made, them move, uh, made them make the move to, to, the, to the AMC and, and the first clinical, official clinical trials, which also passed the, uh, the Ethic Commission. Okay. Uh, 
this is how you see the, the, the setup as it is right now. Uh, as, as I said, I started with bihormonal because I, I, I think you have to steer at least uh, to the left and to the right to go straight. Um, but then again, you also need some safety. Because if you have, if, if I always say one is none. If you have one sensor in the system, it, it doesn't, it, you never know when that sensor is going to trip or is going to fail or whatever. And if you have two sensors, they can check each other. And, 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 uh, it's, it's a lot more safe situations. And, and it also results in, in less finger sticks, less fi painful uh, finger sticks tests. Then again, there's another thing we are measuring in our, in our device. We didn't do it at that time. But l later, during all the clinical trials in the, I in the AMC, um, we find out you have to do something with activity because it, it influences the, the, your body and your, your sugar levels. So at this point, we have a, an accelerometer and we have a heartbeat sensor for if you, if you do very intense sporting. Um, all those information we put into an algorithm. And that is a, that's a big thing uh, about our device. Um, uh, you don't have to put in if you, what you're going to eat, what you're going to do, nothing. You just do what you do, and you just eat what you eat, and, and you can live li like a normal person again. So, and that's important, which we, we all, we get it all from, from our senses. Now, at that time, we bring it together into, with the two uh, um, hormones, and this is actually how it looks right now. You can see I did some workout. So, um, my stomach looks a lot better now. Uh, but uh, no, it's not actually my stomach. You can see, but uh, um, here you can see the device. I've have, I'm wearing one right now here, so it, you have a little bit of an idea uh, about how big it is, and um, it work and the system how it works. So um, here you can see the two sensors. This is where we inject the glucagon, and this is where we inject the insulin. And to give you a little bit of an impression where we're going, this is wh what we're testing right now. And to, give a, to have a medical device get to the market, because that's one of our, our main mission, is to bring the device not only to myself, but to all the people who suffer diabetes uh, and who, who want to wear it. Uh, is that, um, it has to be smaller. It, you have to wear it. This is actually still quite big. But it's pos possible now to test the device in, in, in daily situations. And we already did that also in 2010. We had a device size like this, and then two pumps. And we, we sent people at home for two days in a real life situation with, um, uh, with no protocol on eating, no protocol on sporting. And they, they did what they did normally enjoyed life. And what we get back from the people, I had two days of holiday. Because it's a 24 seven, 365 days a year disease. You never get rid of it. Uh, it's, al it's always with you, and you're always, it's always con confronting you. So um, if you don't have to think anymore about what you do, and, and the only thing you have to do is maintain this device and, and change, the, uh, ch change the hormones, etc., but no more thinking about carbohydrates, etc., it, it, will, it will really release you and, uh, and give you uh, your life back. So that's important. Um, and to see, to, to even have it more functional, and bring it to the market because our aim to bring it to the market is have it next year, middle of next year, to have a CE marked and, uh, and bring it to the market in 2016. And uh, at this point, we, we are quite close solving the problems we had with the, with the glucagon, which is only 24 hours stable. Uh, but in March next year, we're going to test the, the glucagon variant, which is 200 days stable outside of a fridge. So that brings uh, the whole device closer to, to the patients. And this is actually where we're going to. And uh, here you can see a new design. It's, it's quite a, a lot smaller. It's also thinner. And you can compare it to the iPhone 5. I didn't put on the 6, otherwise our device would look too little then. Uh, but uh, uh, but you, you, can see, uh, you can see here uh, the device, how small it is. And, and I still, at this point, I have to wear it on my belt. But then at that point, I can easily, because I've got an iPhone here, can easily put it in my pocket or put it somewhere else where women put something, put things to. And uh, that's, that's how it works because people are suffering a disease, but they also care, and some people care even more about how they look like than treating their disease. But uh, it, it's important uh, to, to, uh, to have it good functional in, in daily life. So, um, well, th that was my story actually. And uh, I, I thank you uh, very much for, uh, for listening to me and spending your time.
for me. So that was my... Uh, my drawing. Thank you.